Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining this session. My name is Mariam Misai and today I'm going to talk about my research topic, which is about questions. Is this question real? It is a collection on perceived intention and implicit attack detection. I did this research together with my colleagues in Rick and AIP in Japan. So I want to start with human human communication, face-to-face -face interaction, which we all miss uh, due to pandemic, and network-based interaction, so the, the chat-based, comment-based. In face-to-face -face interaction, we have the deepest engagement in the conversation. We can monitor each other's social signal, and we try to maintain space. Our impression is important. In network-based interaction, we have lots of opportunity for cross-cultural uh, conversations. Uh, we can say things uh, freely. We can express ourselves. However, uh, we have less chance to observe each other's social signals. Therefore, there are more uh, chances for conflict uh, in the conversation. Setting on conflict can be divided into macro and micro level. Uh, at macro level, the uh, research is focused on social media behavior, like uh, protests, terrorism, things like that, uh, predicting macroscopic social behavior, such as support for Brexit. Uh, but at micro level, the studies will focus on uh, conflict in conversations and debates. Uh, the conversation derailment or early warning of uh, conflict. Uh, in terms of hate speech toxicity, personal attack, and offensive language use are uh, also the subject for these studies. So studies that investigate attacks in conversation mainly draw on natural language processing and we know that first. Uh, most of these studies are actually uh, investigating explicit attacks in conversation, source of hate speech, whether it is group, sexism, racism, abusive language use. That's because this has a high priority due to advocating hatred. However, the question I'm going to raise today is what about those implicit cases of attacks in conversation? Because not all manifestations of hatred are explicitly demonstrated. The level of explicitness is important, and implicit attacks are uh, worth analyzing because they can lead to conflict later on during the conversation. So, as you can tell in this study, I'm going to talk about implicit attack cases, and we use questions as our target because questions actually play a key role in conversation. Questions are originally aimed at a common method to elicit response. However, questions can be unreal. Rather than seeking for information, questions can be used as a means to blame or negatively criticize someone. Now, the key to distinguish sincere and insincere questions lie in the correct interpretations. Now, examples such as, you have completely ignored the comment, haven't you? How can anyone even try to have a rational conversation with you? They all include sort of implicit attack. And actually, they sound familiar because we always hear, hear questions with implicit attack cases. So talking about interpretations, actually, in spite of the theory of mind, we would say that um, when A does an action, then this person is actually doing this based on intention, desire, and belief. And B will interpret this action based on surface message, hidden message, expectations, norms, culture, and lots of other factors that play a role. Therefore, we can decide on appropriate reaction. So lots of tacit and hidden aspects are involved in interpreting the message. So now that we talked about questions, intentions, and interpretations, I can sum up uh, our research questions here. Uh, can a question be used as a means to attack someone? Can a question include no explicit or personal attacks, but still per perceived negatively? Can differences in people's perspective and threshold for being offended result in several different but possible interpretations of the question? Can we detect the intention polarity and identify implicit attack in questions using NLP methods? So these are the questions that we are trying to answer in this study. To conduct this study, we gathered our own data set, building on Wikicom data set, uh, which is made by Cornell University. This includes 48 million conversations. Out of this data set, uh, they actually made uh, 4,188 uh, conversations, pairs of conversations. Half of these conversations start civil and remain civil, whereas the remaining half start civil but end with a personal attack. So two pairs. Uh, and we decided to use this uh, database because Wikipedia comments are estimated to involve a small number of antisocial behaviors, just around 1%. This makes it a very good target for the analysis of implicit attack and negative intention, which is the topic of our study. From this data set, we extracted around 2,100 questions in order to annotate. So we started annotating our data set. Uh, given a question in the context, we wanted our annotators to tell us about intention polarity and attack life. 
So we asked them about the real intention behind this question, and the hypothesis has been negative and positive or neutral. This was task one. And task two, we asked uh, the annotators whether this question has any sort of attack. So they have to choose between no attack, implicit attack, and explicit attack cases. Uh, in case we couldn't reach uh, high agreement, uh, we uh, re annotated uh, our question. So, first, uh, we annotated by seven annotators. Then, uh, if you have high agreement, we annotated by four and then two more annotators. Uh, please note that here our criteria is a bit different from the previous data that I uh, introduced because we are dealing with more with implicit attack cases rather than personal or explicit uh, attacks. Uh, we also define the annotation guidelines. Uh, so uh, we define the uh, intention polarity, whether it is positive or neutral intention. It means it is not harmful at all. Uh, it's kind of sincere question, or it is a negative question. It implies negative motive, spiteful purposes, uh, things such as, for example, it's just a fault, it's trying to criticize the person, humiliating the culture. For a uh, type of attack, uh, so we talked about explicit attacks, so, so if it has a clear hostility, Implicit attacks if they have implied aggressiveness, um, understood as inflicting pain, uh, and no attack if there is no clear or implied instances of offense. So let's look at the statistics. We also conducted meta analysis on our data. Um, so here you can see uh, how negatively the questions were perceived. As you can see, most of the questions were actually associated with having negative intentions. And in terms of attack, you can see we have very little explicit cases, but lots of implicit cases. We also have some low agreement cases for attack type and also for intention polarity, which is uh, our gray area showing uh, that uh, there were some inconsistencies between annotations. Uh, actually, according to other studies, uh, high agreement is achievable if uh, there is extreme cases of hate speech, for example, but uh, in less extreme cases, we usually have different opinions. We conducted a meta-analysis on our annotations to gain more insight. Uh, so almost half of our questions were labeled as having implicit attacks. We found that uh, these included cases of sarcasm described as question, negative criticism, manipulation, and humiliation. Uh, we also noticed that implicit attacks can arise from uh, differences in people's goals. So the goal here is to include the wiki page, but sometimes there are some personal agenda involved, such as proving one's point or discrediting others' work. Uh, other things we noticed was uh, the use of polite formulation in implicit attack cases. Uh, that is a way to describe offense and negative intention. Another very interesting case is negative intentions without direct attack. So these questions are actually perceived negatively, but there is no abusive or direct language used, uh, explicit language used. Uh, also, we notice sometimes people who are asked the question feel like being criticized and would like to react in order to maintain face. For instance, for editors, and this is somehow necessary because of their profile and history. So let's look at uh, one example of negative intention without having direct attack. The question is, may I ask what brought you to this article for the first time to reserve one of my edits? You can see there is no uh, abusive language used. However, the intention is negative. So further meta-analysis uh, requires uncertainty. And these cases arise from uh, distinguishing between positive versus negative intention because it is usually very difficult to do. For example, both interpretations are possible. For instance, may I ask what your plan is with these templates? It can be uh, what are the use cases of these templates? It can be these templates are useless. Uh, the other uncertainty is to distinguish between implicit versus no uh, this, in, in, in these cases, usually the way the reader begins the question largely influences the interpretation. And here, I would say that the perspective and the need for the reader. So, uh, for instance, since then, what input have you tried to offer? What is the input have you, have you rejected? Uh, so, it may be considered as a question to clarify the situation uh, about user's input or uh, Basically, it's for the user for use for the user specifically. Uh, the other also the possibility lies in distinguishing between explicit versus implicit attack cases. And implicit ones usually arise from different thresholds for the attacker. For some people, it's a uh, higher threshold, whereas for some people, it's lower. So, if writing rubbish here, the most exciting thing in your life, that this might be a direct assault to someone. Uh, 
and it can be really good to have those questions based on the location. So uh, here we have the conversation at most personal attack methods, and these three are conversations ending with personal attack. Uh, now the question in this conversation, the question appearing is What we learned is that uh, those uh, civil and personal attack questions include uh, offenses, and implicit attack is distributed almost uniformly in any location. Uh, based on the level of consistency, implicit questions can be part of uh, personal attack or uh, can be Can I can I just take over from here? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's a uh, maximum volume from my computer already. So I don't know what happened. So let me just yeah uh, go over this quickly. Uh, so here we just uh, try to find um, the whether the position of the question in the conversation would lead to differences in the annotation. Uh, so here we have like uh, no personal attack is involved. Uh, the question appears very early before the personal attack. The question appears right before the personal attack and the question is within the personal attack. And here we have no attack cases, implicit and explicit attack cases. And um, on the bottom, we have the same thing with positive and negative intention. The only thing I wanna say here is that uh, no matter where the question appears, uh, there is a high chance that this question has uh, some sort of attack or uh, is perceived negatively. Even when the question uh, appears early in the conversation, which means that that question would actually lead into a sort of conflict later on. Uh, and also we found that uh, the questions can be negatively perceived no matter where they are. Uh, so even in no attack cases, we found that some of the questions were having negative intentions. And moving to the next slide. Uh, so this is uh, just about benchmarking. So for intention polarity, we use different um, Benchmark. So what we did for to use for the context was uh, to use the sentence before the question, the question itself, and the sentence after the question. And uh, we got the best results with Bert and Roberta on uh, classification of negative versus positive classes here. Then uh, on the classification of attack type, again, of course, uh, Bert and Roberta uh, had the best performance because they're actually considering the context better and um, especially working best on the implicit attack cases, which is a topic of our study. And uh, finally, we did some error analysis uh, to see uh, what kind of challenging cases were involved. So cases that were politely formulated, uh, but it, it was negative, was difficult for our classifier, such as, could you please rationalize your behavior here? Uh, this was one of the challenges. Cases that needed high level of conventionalism, such as, is it my browser or did your recent reversion of evolution truncate the end of the article? And then uh, we move on to the cases that mm, there is a mitigate of threat right before the attack, such as, I don't mean to be rude, but have you ever read a book? So these cases would be challenging uh, and also pragmatics, are you a five-year-old? Uh, then uh, cases with implicit attack versus explicit attack also, these are because of the inconsistencies in our annotations, uh, because people's, for example, cultural background and personality would matter. For instance, the words such as ridiculous, nonsense, and lie are explicit attack for some people, but implicit attack for others. And uh, also we found that words such as anyone, no one, or questions such as, am I crazy? Some people feel like it is toward themselves, whereas some people just ignore such questions. And to conclude, we collected the data sets of uh, questions on Wikipedia discussion pages, and we annotated the intentions and uh, type of implicit and explicit attacks. Uh, we found that yes, questions can be used as an indirect method of attack, and yes, questions can be perceived negatively, and people's threshold for tolerating offense and their perspective can lead to two different, you know, several different interpretation, but actually possible interpretations of the same question. We tried to detect the uh, implicit attack cases and negative intentions using our uh, benchmarks. And uh, then um, finally, such a study is uh, important because it helps us learn about high level um, human, human conversation uh, and be able to create systems that can analyze them. And uh, later on, we would like to uh, investigate the type of intention uh, in our data set. So thank you very much, that's all.
Sorry, it's I'm more than it should be. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, that's a sorry for technical issue. Uh, thanks for taking over and and finish the presentation. Yeah. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. So any 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 questions? Uh, questions. I, I think we're doing good on time. Any questions on the uh, on this paper and the question to the to the first author? Uh, yeah, we actually have a question. Uh, is your annotated data set available? Uh, definitely, we wanted to make it available. So right now, we are just uh, extending our data set with uh, annotation of the intention categories. And once this is done, uh, then we would release the whole data set, of course. Cool. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have a question. So uh, for for the implicit annotation, I, I see you have. Um, so I, I'm just curious if there's a, 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 a like interactive kind of process to um, align with annotators on the definition of implicit attack. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so due to COVID situation, our annotations were done online, but uh, what we did was uh, to make very clear definitions for the, our annotators, and we also conducted several pilot testing and uh, some pre-qualification tests. So we made sure that everybody is on the same page, and we kind of pruned our annotators before uh, the actual annotation task begins. I see. So you you have the definition. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. That, make, that makes sense. Um, um, Anyone has another quick question or uh, I, I actually have another one, a very interesting paper. So uh, <laughs> hopefully, so um, why, why 2100, by the way, <laughs> just out of curiosity, um, is, is it because the resource limit uh, or it's... Uh, exactly. It is. Yes, exactly, because um, here, like half of the data set that we were working on had no attack at all. And the other half uh, were ended in a kind of personal attack. So uh, the number of data we started with was not so much. Uh, but um, right now, we are, as I said, um, we are extending our data set. Um, um, and we are trying to include more because we found that even if uh, we consider no attack cases, still some questions are negatively perceived. And the data I presented today is um, like uh, from the meta-analysis of the annotations we actually found about these. So we didn't know such thing from the beginning. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Uh, 